I'm just going to start by creating a three-dimensional model. And this is going to be a simple circular tank. It's going to be not post-tensioned. So um, it's going to be tightness class zero. So I can get away with using the uh, section one of the Eurocos effectively. OK, so I'm going to start by putting some just geometry lines in. So I'm going to start with zero, zero, but minus six in the Z direction. And this is going to go five meters in the X direction. Now, the reason I'm putting this as minus six in the Z direction is I'm going to create a water pressure variation with depth. So it will increase with the depth of the model. OK, so there's my line. I'm going to select the end of this point line here. And I'm going to sweep it in the X direction by 10 meters and also in the Z direction by three meters. So it creates this kink line. I'm going to take the end of this line and I'm going to sweep that in the Z direction by three meters. And there's the sort of section that I'm going to use. Now, this is a circular tank. So what I'm going to do is take all of those lines and I'm going to sweep it by rotation about the Z axis. So sweep by rotation of 90 degrees. And what that will do is create a quarter of the tank model for me. I can then take this whole section and I can copy by a rotation of 90 degrees three times and that will create the whole tank for me so very simple geometry to create so now let's have a look at the engineering properties so mesh surface I'm going to work with thick shells here I'm going to work with quadratic elements so I just call this thick shell and I'm going to put an element size of one meter so if I pick everything and drag this on I will then get some mesh occurring now for the walls I've got a very regular mesh for the base slab I've got an irregular mesh so I would probably need to use a local coordinate system to transform the results for the the base for the walls I don't need to do that okay so let's put some thicknesses to this section so I'm just gonna make the walls and base the same thickness keep it simple so 300 mil thick So when I drop on the thickness, I will get a visualization of the thickness being shown to me. So there you can see how thick it is. I'm just going to switch that off, go back to the wire diagram. Materials, I'm just going to use a standard concrete from the material library. So concrete, I'm going to use EN1991 and I'm going to have a, a 30 mix. And OK. Again, I'm going to assign that to everything. Now for the support I'm going to just support the base of the tank and I'm going to use sort of very simplistic soil springs for this so supports so I'm going to use spring stiffness and I'm going to put a spring stiffness of 10 e3 and I'm going to put that in three directions and I'm going to do that stiffness per unit area and I'm just going to call this soil okay the easiest way of picking the base is if I click in the X box down at the bottom here I can look side on to it so I can just grab the base and drag those soil supports on. Okay, so there's my sort of spring supports representing the soil. I'm just going to switch those off. And finally, I need to put some loading on this. So if I go to the uh, analysis tab, I'm going to right hand mouse button on low case one, switch on gravity. I'm also, while I'm here, just going to rename this just a dead load DL. So that's my dead load. Now, as I said, I want to put on some water loading on this but I want the water loading to increase with the sort of depth as we go through this now to do that I'm going to create a variation now that variation in this case is going to be a field variation now field variations vary things in the global X Y and Z direction now the variation that I'm going to use here is very simple it's just a linear variation I'm going to have minus Z times one one being the bulk density of the water effectively in this case and I'm just going to call this water pressure now I'm going to assign this to a, a local distributed load so attributes loading and I'm going to use a local distributed load and that's going to be per unit area and all this is going to be is minus 9.81 and times the variation that I've just created. Now to get to the variation, I click in this down arrow here and it will allow me to select the variation that I've just created. 
So that's the intensity of my load. And I'm just going to call this water load. And I'm basically going to pick everything and drag that water load on there. And I'm going to put it into a location that's called water. Now, what you should see when the loading arrows appear is that we get loading arrows on the model, but there are no loading arrows at the very top of the tank here. And that's because if you evaluate that variation, that variation is zero at this level. Every meter I go down into the tank, the variation will increase by one effectively. So at the bottom, I have six times the load that I have at the top effectively. So simple water variations. Now, in this particular model, I'm just doing something very simplistic, two low cases. So I could go on and use my combination builder to build a combination, but I'm just going to do this manually. It's very simple. So smart combination. I'm going to include my two low cases, put some factors on them. So 1.1, 1.5, and I'm just going to call this combination ULS. And I can now run it and look at the results. So if I run this, OK, now because I've got this sort of regular mesh on the walls and a regular mesh down here, I would need to use a local coordinate system to post-process the base separately from the walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this one wall here, this, this surface here, and I'm just going to look at that on its own. It just keeps it simple, so keep us only visible. OK, I'm going to switch off my deform mesh and just switch off the loading arrows. So I could start to look at results on this wall. So I could start to look at a bending moment. So contours of force moments. And I could look at the MX direction. So there's my bending moment in the X direction. I could also look at the bending moment in the Y direction. But actually what I want to do is start to look at some reinforcement on this uh, wall section. So in here, I'm going to design, uh, define some reinforcement. Now, for this particular model, I'm just going to have 12 mil bars at 150 in both directions. And I'm going to leave the cover as 50 mil and just call this RC layout. And I'm going to assign it to this surface here. OK, so now I've assigned that to the surface. I can use the RC designer to look at the reinforcement and the utilization on this section. So design, RC slab design. So in here, I can choose which of the design codes I want to work with. So it could be Australia, it could be United States. I'm going to work with United Kingdom here, and I'm going to use the part one of the code. But there are other codes in there, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to look at the Clark-Nielsen forces. So rather than just looking at the bending components, I'll be looking at the sort of actual components as well. The defaults here I'm going to leave. If I go next, this is allowing me to adjust how the calculations are being done. But that's fine. I'm going to leave the defaults there. OK, so now what this allows me to do is rather than just looking at moments on my section, if I go to my contours, I can look at ULS design calculations. And I could start to look at various components. So I'm going to look at Util Max in the top surface. And this is showing me here, I've got a utilization of about 25%. If I were to look at the utilization of the bottom surface, again, about 23%. Now, at the moment, I'm just looking at the water load. So if I set the combination active, you can see that utilization goes up to about 45% in terms of the layout that I've got. But this is a very simplistic model. It's only a couple of low cases. Now, what I could also go on and do is put things like uh, pressure loads for the soil pushing against the tank. I could look at tank being filled with water or empty of water. Lots of different low cases I could put together. But for this simple presentation, I've just tried to concentrate on the model building and defining the reinforcement.